welcome to my channel. Um, if you don't know who I am, oh, my camera's flashing already. I am Somi Echelona and I'm a, a wedding and events planner. Also do some acting, some vlogs here and there on the side, you know. I just like everything, but today we are focusing on the weddings and events side. So weddings and parties with Somi. So today we're gonna be talking about a wedding budget breakdown. So me, myself, I am creative. And especially when it comes to parties and stuff, I just want to focus on the creative things, how the style is going to go, what the decor is going to look like, but you always have to get the budget down first and just crack down on that so that you could do everything else, basically. So this is why we're starting with the most important thing to help you guys out and make sure that you're on the right track so that you can, you know, book everything else and sort out everything else for your wedding. But this is why we're having a breakdown of each section that you can include for your wedding. Guarantee, like, some of these elements you could take out, swap around, it, it just depends on what sort of wedding you're having and what you want. But this is a perfect way, a little guide, basically, to help you get started and, you know, see how much things might cost. Especially when you do your supplier searching and, and vendor and venue searching so like as long as you know the percentages of what the breakdown is and then obviously once you've determined what your budget is then you'll be able to decide when you're searching they give you a quote oh okay that one might be too over budget or maybe we could take a bit out of here and give some more there like it'll just help you along the way so starting with venue and catering this is going to be 20 percent of your budget they're always going to be the highest there's no way to knuckle down the venue unless um it depends on the venue you're going for if you go out of season they might be cheaper if you go on a weekday they might be cheaper it just depends on the venue some venues do off-peak prices and some venues don't it depends so that's another way to knuckle down on the price but it's always going to be 20 percent of your budget anyway and then with catering same thing 20 percent of your budget it might be a bit cheaper depending on where you get married how many people especially you'll get um is going to be at the wedding and obviously it depends on what sort of food you're having if that's three course fine dining or a buffet or you know family serving that was so very dramatic but yeah those things do determine the price, but it will be 20% of your overall wedding budget. So the next thing I would say personally is 15%, um, which is gonna be photography and videography. So again, you don't, you might not have a videographer, so it just depends on you, but in terms of photography, that's another quite um, high portion of the budget, especially what you want them to do. They're with you for 12 hours a day. You're, you're gonna be like this with them. Um, and obviously if they need an assistant and things like that, and depends where they're traveling from, if you want coverage from getting your makeup or you know, get your suits done, like tried on I mean in the morning, to like the evening first da dance and beyond. So they are another large part of the budget. And the same with videography, they're gonna be there with you for 12 plus hours of the day. So this is why, um, they're a large portion of the budget because like again they spend the most time with you they really see what or you know capture those moments for you basically so they're very important and another person that could be 15 percent is a wedding planner as well so again this just depends on what sort of package you book with a wedding planner if it's on the day just service or you know a year-long service that definitely depends as well but those i would say is about 15 percent of your overall budget this one's a long one music entertainment, flowers, and decor, I would say is 10% of your overall wedding budget. Again, this could be interchanged. So if you wanted the photography or video to be 10% and then I don't know, decor to be 15, like that you can change them around. But I would say these elements tend to be the 10% um, price um, point of, sorry, 10% um, overall budget because of with these elements they take a lot of work to plan but once you have planned them on the day they all come together so it's the planning beforehand that I would say takes a lot more effort um maybe not so much with music and entertainment because you could just send them your requests obviously but um they're going to be you know partying with you till the end of the night or maybe you wanted a celloist um a cellist sorry like for your ceremony or saxophonist or harpist you never know so entertainment music can be a number of different things. It could be the DJ or band in the evening. Sorry, I'm choking. I just had a biscuit. <laughs> DJ or band in the evening, or and you know, as well as some performers during the day. That's why that's another large part of your budget. And obviously, flowers. If you're getting silk flowers, that could be cheaper compared to real flowers. But again, this depends on what you prefer. Maybe having a real bouquet and then having the rest silk. 
Um, and then with decor, it just depends how elaborate you want to go, how big the venue is, again, how many people you're having at the wedding, because then if you have less tables, for example, you won't need as many candles, so then that makes it cheaper. So all these elements are definitely 10% because they're really like interchangeable in what you can do with them. So 5% is the cake, production, stationery and transport. So I put production there because sometimes not all weddings have a sort of production element, which when I mean production is like stage, dance floor, lighting, those sort of elements. If you just wanted lighting, then that could be 5% of your budget. If you wanted a bit more, it will probably go into the 10%. In terms of cake, stationery and transport, again, Stationery depends on how many people you've invited, what you want, if you want loads of signs, if you just want, you know, just one welcome sign or just one table plan, it totally depends on you. And then with cake, depends on how many tiers you're having, if you're having some dummy cakes and then like the rest is going to be in the back cut up, that obviously alters the price because they won't have to decorate those ones that are just going to be cut up and not presented. Um, and then transport as well. Um, depends how many like what you're hiring a mini bus or maybe it's just taxis so this is why it's five percent because i would say they're important elements still but again they're interchangeable and you can really like play with them to make it um not as expensive and then the next thing is definitely having um extra money put away so i would say about two percent of your total overall budget two percent of your money you should put to the side just in case, for example, Ryan and my wedding, the evening cakes were dropped out, so therefore that 2% really helped us out because we had the money, it was annoying, don't get me wrong, but we had the money to hire someone else. So that 2% is just in case something you never know happens, or maybe you do want to give more to decor, so you have a bit more money to spare, so you use that. Um, so yeah, always put 2% of your total overall budget away to the side. Forget it's there until like near the end of... Um, until closer to the wedding so that you can really you know use it for something good or you might not use it at all and it's always good to have a general idea of the date that you want to get married again the price can change because if you're off peak weekend those elements can change um, so what I would do I'm just going to read this out because I wrote it down calculate the general idea of the date plus how much you need to spend divide that by the amount of months until the day and that equals the total you want to save per month <laughs> yeah so then you'll have a roundabout clue how much you can save per month to obviously have that goal because you're going to be paying people off gradually it's not like you just give a lump sum um guaranteed like by the cl closer you get to the wedding you'll be paying more people off but you pay people off gradu gradually i can't speak gradually so you won't feel it as much but it's good to know how much you need to save per month and not get in trouble obviously this was just a little quick guide to help you get going point in the right direction but i hope it does help give you some ideas basically on what you can do and obviously where you will be with your budget but yeah thank you for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions or if you want to see something um particular on this channel just let me know and i'll catch you on the next video bye